Tommy V in Michigan. He was on fire this morning. Hey, thank you, Tommy V in Michigan. Th that, yes, sir. If you, if you share my prayers. Mm -hmm. my Tommy V's on. Yeah, we'll jump over there. Tommy V doing great stuff over there. Okay. All right, let's do it. All right, Mr. Daniels, you have two files in front of us today, and you have some traffic tickets as well, so we're going to do those first. Apparently, you missed some court dates with these traffic tickets. When you miss those dates, uh, you a judge issued an arrest warrant for you. You do have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. You also have the right to an attorney. And if you cannot afford an attorney, the court will provide one for you. Do you understand those rights, sir? Yes. All right. Tickets are P103-6625 with a charge of failure to display a valid operator's license. P906332, driving while license suspended, and no one's, no, just that one. And then X336-2730 with no ops on person. Mm, yep. These are all misdemeanor charges. Maximum penalty you face on each is up to 93 days in jail and or $500 fine. We're going to set aside the arrest warrants, enter not guilty plea on your behalf, give you a personal bond. Your next court date will be a pretrial July the 2nd uh, in front of Judge Sherman here in 36th District Court. Now, your other two matters. Hmm. Okay. Let's do them one at a time. First one is 240575. I'm sorry, 2405 State of Michigan versus Anthony Andre Daniels, Council. Jennifer Douglas for the people, P7748. Thank you. Court will enter not guilty plea on your client's behalf. Court also notes. There's a family member of uh, Mr. Daniels, who's president in court memory. How are you related to Mr. Daniels? His mother. Thank you. Um, as to bond on the home invasion case. Please. Your Honor, on the home invasion case, the people are going to ask for a bond of $100,000 cash or surety with Tether House arrest for the following reasons. Um, Your Honor, uh, the court knows that there's the other case we still have to arraign, but Mr. Daniels has a pending case right now um, that was close in time to this one, the date of offense on the other case being um, between April 15th of 2024 and April 19th of 2024. Um, Your Honor, with the same complaining witness, uh, with some also some charges that um, without without a victim, that case is charged with uh, firearm possession uh, by a prohibited person, ammo possession by a prohibited person, felonious assault, witness bribing, intimidating, um, interfering, uh, felony firearm, domestic violence. Um, Your Honor, in that case, for whatever reason, um, Mr. Daniels was given a $50,000 personal bond, um, even though he, uh, part of this um, incident was actually caught on video by the complaining witness, which is the same complaining witness that we have on the home invasion case, um, Your Honor. And uh, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Daniels in, in the other case admitted to having that firearm, even though he's not allowed to have one because he's a um, convicted felon. He had he got off of probation for a CCW in June of 22. I don't know why there's no have notice of your honor. But what gives the people pause here and that where we feel like there's a danger to this complaining witness is one of the allegations. Um, but in the pending case, 
there were actually jail calls where Mr. Daniels con contacted the complaining witness while in the DDC. And while um, in those conversations multiple times offered money to the complaining witness who turned him down repeatedly. And at one point the defendant um, is alleged to have said on the jail call, um, I am going to be out on probation. So how is a PPO going to give you peace? I don't have a past record, so they will give me probation and I will be out tomorrow and I am still trying to pay you. So your honor, we have a situation here with the same complaining witness um, where we have alleged assault, a whole, a, a, um, alleged home invasion. Um, and then we have him allegedly trying to pay off that witness and there's an implied threat there to say, what's a PPO? Basically, what's a PPO going to do for you? I'm going to get a probation and get out. So, Your Honor, we do have concerns for safety here, given the allegations. And we're asking for 100,000 cash or surety to other house arrest. Judge, I'm sorry. What are the charges? I'm sorry. I, I'm, maybe I'm missing. First, first degree home invasion. Allegedly broke into the girlfriend's house and assaulted her rather um, significantly, allegedly. Is, 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 it, is it assault charge with it or is it just the home invasion? Sorry. Well, it's the home invasion. Uh, and as it is set forth in count one, uh, he committed an assault uh, on the complaining witness. Maximum penalty, 20 years and or $5,000. Is there a bribery witness intimidation charge or anything like that? I, I, I mean, That's a pending case. Oh, it's, it's a it's a pending case because I know there's a case where the complaining witness did not show up to the exam um, that was just recent. So I mean, I, I know that. So I you know I don't know the relationship between Miss Alexander, Miss Daniels, Judge, but I know she didn't show up to a previous case in the exam. I think a lot of this stuff, Judge, obviously, the computer is is forming you know these cases and 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 you know. If they're having conversations, she's not showing up. She's not trying to go forward with certain things at exams. And, you know, it's, it's probably a different picture, Judge. I understand what the charges may be, but, you know, there are two sides to every story. And it's always two sides to every story. And I think the people mm -hmm. have one side. They're trying to promote this a certain way. And I understand that, Judge. I think the court and the court can see that Mr. Daniels' mom is here. He has family support. He lives with his mom, Judge. So his mom's going to make sure he comes to court. He's not a flight risk. It's not going to have contact with the complaint if the court says don't have contact with the complaint. And I think that's important. Um, yeah. Sorry. No, go ahead, Ms. Douglas. Cause, cause oh, no I was going to say, there was an exam. And the case I'm talking about with the attempt to bribe this witness, there was no exam. So there's no exam for her to show up to. Okay. Well, I'm, well I was talking about another, another exam with the same complaining witness. Did I'm there. not aware of that case. Um, you know, but I, I'm, I'm just saying, Judge, that... You know, obviously there there's two sides again to every store. And you know, there's a lot to this. And and sometimes things get blown out of proportion in terms of, of what the charges are. And then we find out later up uh, that it's really not what it seems to be. But obviously the prosecutors, you know, they're making their case. Um, you know, but, judge? right now, and, and you want to say so. What do you want to say, Mr. Daniels? Because I want to make sure that you I'm, I'm, if I'm you say uh, understand that they're recording this, so whatever you yes. say. They're going, they're, it's going to be recorded. I, I don't want you to say anything yeah. that's going to hurt you. You know that? I don't want no, no, to... understand, 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 understand. I, I, I just want to say that uh, that I already already went through uh, a preliminary exam. Hold on, hold on. I, 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 I know, I understand. Right. So she already didn't show up to that one, and I'm and I'm already on a tether restriction from her location. So there's there's there haven't been any contact since. Right, and there won't. Well, that's right? all. And and that's and that's the thing. It's like it's a lot more to this that you don't that obviously it's only one side you get one side of it in a report you don't get the whole picture and, uh, we get a chance to get both sides because we read the report then we get a chance to talk and we get a, a bigger understanding of what's really going on and and a lot of times judges and as the courts know because the court's very wise the court's been doing this for years that it's more to it than what's in the investigation report his mother's here he has family support um he's going to stay with her um, you know that's why I'm asking for is employed every day, go to work, even if the court wanted to put a tether. He had a tether restriction. He works every day, makes a good living. And I'm just asking the court judge to consider uh, you know, a personal bond, whatever other conditions the court wishes to impose. Well, you know, um, 
True. This is not uh, a trial. We're not making findings of facts, but the court does have a responsibility to um, to look out for the uh, health, uh, safety, and welfare of the complaining witness when setting bond. Um, and the court is very positively uh, impressed with the fact that the defendant's mother has come to court um, However, uh, the phone calls outlined by Ms. Douglas uh, are extremely disturbing for multiple reasons. One, uh, there's obviously the implied or perhaps overt threat to the complaining witness. Um, and and uh, moreover, indicates that this uh, defendant has had some experience with the criminal justice system, predicting the outcome of whatever sentencing might come from this, um, only uh, ensures that this court uh, is, is concerned uh, about the safety of Ms. Alexander. She's a complaining and witness, witness in both of these cases that are in front of us today. Uh, and out of significant concern for her safety, court will set bond as follows. Sir, uh, you're to have no contact with Miss Alexander, no contact with the American Street address. Should you post bond, you'll be on GPS tether on house arrest. Um, does, Mom, does he live with you? No, he doesn't. Okay. Um, <laughs> Oh, you can come there. Okay. Court will set bond this matter at hundred thousand dollars cash or surety. You will have a bond redetermination hearing in two days' time in front of Chief Judge McConico. Uh, and he'll give that another look. And perhaps as Mr. Reagan uh, alluded to earlier with more information, Chief Judge might do something uh, different bond-wise. Judge, could I just ask respectfully, Ms. Douglas, the, the witness intimidation case, which, what, what case is that and where is that? That, that case number is 24-002762-0. Zero one dash FH. That's at Third Circuit Court. It was bound over on May tenth, twenty twenty four, and so it hasn't from Detroit. Yes. Okay. I can't. I don't. Okay. As to the other over. case, as to the other case, it'll be twenty four zero five seven five zero six, State of Michigan versus Anthony Andre Daniels, Counsel. Well, Jennifer Douglas right for the people. P seven two seven four eight. And Philip Reagan, on behalf of Mr. Daniels, Your Honor, way the former already stand mute. He has been advised of his rights. Court will enter not guilty plea on your client's behalf. That's the bond. Your Honor, here are the allegations we believe are actually even more concerning than the case we just did. However, we do acknowledge that the date of offense here is June 5th of 2022. Um, the date on the investigator's report is January 14th, 2023. So I don't know what the delay there was, um, Your Honor. Uh, but here we have uh, an accusation of not just a, a physical um, assault, but also a sexual assault that was prolonged in nature, um, Your Honor. And given that then there was allegedly subsequently the home invasion and then um, subsequently uh, this attempt in, uh, to intimidate the same complaining witness, these are all cases involving the same complaining witness. And so we have a concern here for her safety, um, Your Honor. We're asking for a 50,000 cash or security with other house arrest. Mr. Reagan, because you know, obviously, this is a, you know, case of charges are serious. Um, there's a relationship, you know, there. Um, they were together, they've been together for the last two years, judge, complaining and, and, and the defendant. Um, you know, obviously, it's serious. You know what I'm asking for, judge. I think that if you put a no contact order in place. That can suffice right now, um, you know, and there's a lot going on here, Judge, that we have to deal with right now. I think if the court places a tether, no contact, I think that will suffice. Obviously, there's a lot of facts or information that has to come out, Judge, 
And right now we're early. We're not talking about guilt or innocence right now. We're just talking about allegations. Um, there are a lot of emotions. But one of the things, Judge, I think is important when, when you know, with her not showing up at the exam, that tells me something, Judge. But I know the court has to look at certain things when setting bond. I do get that. And I understand that. Mm -hmm. I'm asking the court to consider, uh, in this case, a, a personal bond with the GPS tether with the House of Reps. Thank you. Uh, for all the reasons set forth in the prior case, I'm sorry, did I cut you off, Mr. Reagan? No, no, Judge. Okay. For all the reasons set forth in the prior case, uh, again, uh, conditions of bond will be no contact with Ms. Alexander, uh, no contact with the American Street address, GPS tether, house arrest, court will set bond $50,000, cash or surety, there will be a bond redetermination hearing on June the 5th, two days from today, in front of Chief Judge McConico. The next date after that will be June 11th, probable cause conference, June 18th, preliminary exam, both in front of Judge King here in 36th District Court. Thank you, sir. You can step aside. Thank you. This way, brother. Thanks, man.